Good evening. Adam is off tonight. The attack on Representative Lee Zeldin has led to renewed calls to change New York's laws governing bail. Zeldin expressed outrage when the man accused of attacking him during a campaign stop was initially released. The suspect was later arrested on a federal charge of assaulting a member of Congress and remains in custody. But today, Monroe County Sheriff Todd Baxter weighed in once again calling for change to state laws. Alex Love is live tonight with a closer look at both sides of the bail reform debate. Alex. It's important to note, Teresa, the DA's office chose to only charge the man accused of trying to stab Representative Zeldin with attempted assault in the second degree, which does not qualify for bond to be set under the law. Since then, Sheriff Todd Baxter has been meeting with lawmakers at all levels, arguing more revisions to this law must be done. Since the last session ended, New York judges were given more power to set bail for gun and hate crimes or repeated offenses of property theft. But for Sheriff Todd Baxter, it doesn't go far enough. There's no standards in there to allow us to look at a person and say they're a menace to society. They're, they're a threat to our community. There's nothing in there to allow us to look at that and then make a decision if we're going to detain this person. And uh, we know a person's caught, carried a gun twice this year. We know a person has carried a gun three times this year. They're not detained. That's a recipe for disaster. Over the weekend, the sheriff's office tweeted data showing from 2019 to 2021, victims of shootings in Rochester jumped from 172 to 419, while bookings in the county jail dropped more than 50 percent. However, those numbers include all violators arrested for non-gun related charges. Sheriff Baxter argues they're still a relation. Minor crimes, if you want to call them, larcenies at the stores. When that starts being reduced, you see a cross section there that could illustrate, right? We can't show causation yet, but could illustrate very clearly that when you do less enforcement, there's a potential for crime, significant crime to go up, violent crime to go up. It's less restrictive in a sense that um, people being charged are given an opportunity to uh, essentially be not incarcerated while their charges are pending. Local criminal defense attorneys like Derek Hogan feel the focus should be on giving suspects of misdemeanors or nonviolent felonies with little financial resources more chances to fight their cases outside of incarceration. And gun violence doesn't directly link to bail reform policies. When you move away from monetary bail and less restrictive means, whether it's reporting to probation or maybe even electronic monitoring, I think those are beneficial to certain individuals. For low level offenses or maybe even like low level drug offenses, I don't think it's necessary to put a bail at an exorbitant amount of money before the, the, the case actually goes to a trial. Throughout the day, Sheriff Todd Baxter told us he has met with more than 10 lawmakers at all levels for ideas on bail reform revisions, stating that they all can agree the current policies are not perfect in their eyes. As for District Attorney Sandra Dorley, who has faced some scrutiny for her friendship with Representative Zeldin and support for his campaign, a spokesperson told us that she has not and never been a co-chair on the campaign and that she, that she is expected to recuse herself in the prosecution due to that friendship with Zeldin because of what happened on Thursday's attack. Live in Rochester, Alex Love, News 8. All right, Alex, thank you. We also want to clarify that former interim public defender Jill Paperno maintains the attempted assault in the second degree charge did not require bail prior to the reforms enacted by state lawmakers.